you have access to this entire website, um, Auburn Tech Toolkit. You'll see right here, it says in accordance with Edlaw2D, please check with your district to make sure they've approved these tech tools. What that means is that these tech tools are out there. However, each district is different. So what might allow be allowed in one district may not be allowed in another. So please just check with your administrator to make sure that these tools are allowed in your school district and that's okay that you use them. We wanna make sure we're protecting our students' personal information. A lot of these tools have been approved by our own district of Questar. Um, but like I said, each school different district is different. So go ahead and just double check with your administrator, give them a shout out. It's like, hey, just so you know, I'm using this tool. I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial of how to use this website. We try to make it user friendly. We are still constantly updating it. Um, so we're just going to go through. You'll notice over here, we have just the different options. So we have home, augmented and virtual reality. These are articles, communication, interactive assessments, low tech, no tech, produce and publish, read to students, translation tools, text accessibility, text resources, New York State resources, videos, um, and so on. So if you go to augmented and virtual reality, I divided it into two sections. So the top section are just different ones that you could use, HP Reveal, Metaverse, Quiver, World Brush, 3D Bear. All of these will take you to their actual websites, and then there's a little video on how to use them. We try to make the videos from two to five minutes long. Um, so if you like the video, you like what you see, go ahead and click on the link, and you can go ahead and play around and explore with it. Now, down here is something called Merge Cube. Merge Cube is a cube you could buy on Amazon, but if you're like me and you are a teacher, you have no money, you might want to just have the free one. So right here we attached, if you click on it, it's a paper Merge Cube that you can send to your students or send to your families. Um, they can cut them out. And then if you download these applications, you can use the Merge Cube. So Mr. Body, uh, the solar system, all of these are available once you have that paper cube in front of you. So these are just ones, um, you know, that you could have that 3D, that virtual one, uh, feel free to explore. Um, so then we go to articles. These are just articles that I find on tech. And as I find them, I think they're interesting. I link them up, five reasons to use digital choice boards, free technologies for teachers, using digital directed drawings. So these are just different ones that you could use um, that we keep updating. The next one is communication. So communication tools, what we have here, this is a bit different. These are six communication tools that I have personally used um, and it takes you straight to the website. And then there's a little two to three minute clip explaining each tool. Now we did a little bit more research. So you'll notice here um, we have a really big spreadsheet. I'm gonna open it up. So it takes us through the six tools that I've used um, and it breaks it down by security and privacy policies, communication tools. It tells you a bit about the unlimited message, the read receipts, um, community building tools. Can you, how can you use them as a community and coordination tools. So if you wanna talk to your administrator and you're like, hey, I'm really using talking points because as you can see with talking points, it has over a hundred different languages. I really like this one um, where I was using, you know, Class Dojo, but that one only has 35 different languages. But, you know, if you're somebody who likes to have those community tools or that student portfolio, that's when you would look at Seesaw, Blooms, or Class Dojo. Um, if you really want to get into even more applications, I found this. I did not create this one. It's just research on parent communication apps. Um, and they go into uh, more apps and they go uh, diving even deeper. It's kind of a little bit of a rabbit hole, um, but it's here for you. You'll, you'll notice the first ones are the same, but then they have like Parent Square, Living Tree, Simply Circle. Um, so there's more here for you to use. And uh, I have to give Jessica all the credit. So Jessica was nice to do this. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and into the live spreadsheet. So she updates it fairly regularly. Um, the next one we're gonna go to is interactive assessments. So you'll see here that it gives you the video, the link again, and then it gives you a little description and it tells you if it's a website, if you have to pay or not, um, and then the grades that are it's appropriate for. So you'll notice like deck toys, here's a little description. You could watch how it's made, less than five minutes. It's a website, it's free with paid options. So if you see something that says with paid options, that means most of it's pre, but if you want like the upgraded version or certain things added, you'd have to pay for that, but the platform itself is free. Um, if it's a subscription, that means, you know, it's free for like 14 days and then, uh, you have to pay for it. The predominant amount of things on this website are free because as a teacher, I had no money. <laughs> so you'll see free, free, um, you know, and there are tons and tons of text tools out there. We just try to put a 
there's like 20 in this section. I could name a, a tech tool that has like a twin, like Screen Classify and Loom, Edpuzzle and Play Posit. Um, so if there's one here that doesn't work for you, but you want something similar, feel free to reach out and email us like, hey, do you have any suggestions? And that's what we're here for. Um, so all of these are just different ways that you could assess your students um, and just see how they're doing. So then we go into low tech, no tech. We're still adding on to it, but it's just, you know, during this coronavirus right now, if you need paper copies of things, you can go ahead and click in there. Uh, produce and publish. These ones are all different ways um, on which you can ask your students to show their learning. Um, so you, as you can see, here's the video. Here's the link. Here's a description. Here's how teachers you use this tool. So different ways in which you can use this tool, the platform, the price, and then the age is appropriate for it. So this one has close to 30 different tools in there. Um, and as you can see towards the bottom, we're still adding. So like VoiceThread's a great one that I'm finding. ThingLink, Bumble, um, I've used all of these. They're great tools. But as you can see, we're constantly uh, updating them. So the next one is just uh, Read to Students. This one just talks about different applications that will read to students. So if you have students at home or students in class that uh, need someone to read to them, but you know you have 25 other kids or you have you know, six other classes, these are different applications that you can install or have that will read to students. Um, so that way they can just put headphones in or if they're at home, they could hit the button and it will read everything to them. Um, the next one is translation tools. So these are all just different ways to translate. Um, you can see that they have little videos or if they need, um, they're just extensions that you install at the top of your computer. Uh, and here's just a couple of them. If they have videos, it kind of explains it. Um, I highly recommend Microsoft. I feel like they're, they're coming from the back end. They're doing really good. Um, but you know, like Microsoft versus Google, they're both going to help you, but they are both automated. So just keep in mind um, that it is an algorithm. So then the next one we're going to talk about is text accessibility. So this is just different ways on how we can at, make the text accessible to different students. Um, like Edit allows you to put in questions to websites or break up paragraphs. Uh, same with insert learning. Then you have like read and write, which will do text to speech. So it will read the text aloud. Um, it allows uh, highlighting. It actually allows you to create a picture dictionary, which is really cool. And it has um, an option which you can highlight the entire text and it will turn it into an audio file. So if you know if you're reading a story in class and you want to just put it into a QR code for kids to take home or attach the file to Google Classroom, that is an option. Things like Rewordify will simplify the text level. So if you put in, you know, four score and seven years ago, it will tell you it's 87 years. Um, too long didn't read it's one of my favorite ones it'll take the text and it will break it down into 75 50 or 25 percent so it's keeping that text level so you know if it's an 11th grade text the 25 percent of it will be at an 11th grade level it just lowered it so you're still exposing kids to the grade level material you're just condensing how much you're giving to them while trying to stay on the topic. My advice though is when you read it, make sure that the point that you want is still there. Um, Cause sometimes when we condense and condense and condense, we lose the points or the, the things that we're really looking for. Um, and you know, what's nice about this last one, the text easeability assessor is that that one um, will tell you what grade level text that you find are. So it's kind of nice to know, okay, so this is really like a 12th grade level and I'm giving it to sixth graders, probably shouldn't do that. That was an extreme example. Uh, so the next one is text resources. So these are where students can read um, books in different languages or have access to books. Um, so you'll see like this one's more primary, but then this one right here, Common, common Lit, is definitely more secondary. Um, if there is a video, I put it in, but it links it right to the page. Um, and there's over 20 different ones here um, for kids to use. I highly suggest Wonderopolis. I guess I liked it so much that I put it on there twice. Um, I'll have to delete it. Wonderopolis is fantastic. It has immersive reader built into it, which will read the text to kids, translate text for kids, put in picture dictionaries. Um, it will do the spacing. It will highlight nouns, verbs, adjectives. It's a really great resource. I highly suggest that one. Um, Wonderopolis also has, um, actually I can walk you through. Wonderopolis um, will allow you to look at the different words in the article and give definitions. Um, it has videos and other pictures attached to it. So we're just waiting for it to open.
Here we go. So what you just do, so it's, you know when you're teaching and a kid's like, oh, I wonder why snow is white or how come when it rains it's not pink? Um, you just find a wonder. Kids, like, why is green everywhere? How are erasers made? How to advance technology? These are all wonders that kids have. Um, so let's say you're teaching a lesson on, I don't know, whales. So you go ahead, you click that, um, and you want to bring in an article. So maybe you're like, uh, why are they called killer whales? Who knows? You click on the article. Um, they'll have like the main questions. They'll have pictures. You can see there's a video here. Here's the article and it has the wonder words, the uh, definitions pop up. And then you can see right here, here are the wonder words. Um, I am curious what is, oh, it takes you to another link. Okay, cool. Um, and then it talks about how to try it out. And then what's really interesting is, like I said, if you click here that you listen, it takes you to Immersive Reader. So um, Immersive Reader is something that you can find in Internet Explorer. Um, as you can see, I had my settings from playing around with it last time, uh, but you can change the text size. You can make it bigger, smaller. You can make the spacing together. You can change the font. You know, if you have a dyslexic learner um, or someone that's, that struggles, you can change the background of the, the background color. If you need there are more colors <laughs> um, if you like if you're teaching grammar or if kids need help reading you can break apart the syllables to help them out you can do nouns and verbs they will change all the colors um, adjectives are green show labels adjective 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 um, and then the last one is you know line focus so if you want you can have focusing on like paragraph if you need the kids to focus on just one line um, and then when it reads, they look at one line at a time. Why are they called killer whales? Um, you know, if you, they want to look at it in Spanish, you can translate it by word. So if I click on, you know, called, there's the word called, there's it in Spanish. Here's different pictures that go along with it. Called? Yeah, man. And then there's the picture. Um, or if you want the whole entire document. Here is now the Spanish version, and it will read the Spanish version as well. ¿Por qué se llaman orcas asesinas? And then if you need to, you can change, um, if it's a vo female or male voice, you can slow down the speed. Asesinas. <laughs> or, you know, if you need to, you can speed up the speed. Asesinas. <laughs> um, so it's really great. This is built into Microsoft Word Online. So if you take any of the documents you have and put it on Word Online, this feature is automatically built in. Um, and then last one, we have just, you know, New York resources. So if you need access to any of the things from New York State, and then we also just have videos that as we find, we uh, upload them here as well. Um, so you see like language development, the superpower of being bilingual, and you there's a short little videos that as we're putting up there that deal with language progression and ENL students, um, we're just putting them right up there. So, uh, and then you have the home button and you have access to this. Like I said, it's right on the Arburn website, or you can put in, you know, sites.google, um, this whole fun URL up here. But just one more time, if you were looking for it, you would go to 